أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله The Prophet of mankind, the peace of our heart and mind, the most generous and kind, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He states, and this hadith is found in Sahih al-Bukhari, the first hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, in fact, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّجَادِ that the actions depend upon the intention. وفي مقام الآخر and in another place, the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he says, نية المؤمن خير من عمله that the intention of a believer is better than his action. So before we start today's program on the topic of سيدنا علي كرم الله تعالى وجهه الكريم, let's make some good intentions in order that we can gain. Immense blessings and the uh, immense reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah bless us with. So without good intentions, no reward will be attained. So we should always make good intention before doing any permissible good deed. We should always make some intentions. Stop for a while and then go ahead and make some good intention before doing the action. And inshallah, the more intentions you make, the more blessings and the more rewards you will gain. So the first and foremost intention that we should make is that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are going to listen, I myself will deliver the bayan inshallah. We can also make the intention that inshallah whatever we learn from this we're going to try to pass this on, um, remember it and also pass it on and also try our best to act upon whatever we can from whatever message is being portrayed here inshallah. Another intention we can make is that any time that we hear the name of the Prophet وسلم, we will recite the Rud and Salam upon him. Whenever we hear the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will try to glorify him. Whenever we hear the name of any of the companions of the Holy Prophet وسلم, we will try to honor them with the holographic of radiallahu ta'ala anhu or radiallahu ta'ala anha if it's a sahabiyya. So today's topic is on amazing personality, uh, someone who was a very close companion of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, someone who is known as Shiri Khuda, meaning the Lion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This personality is none other than Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem. May Allah Azzawajal shower immense blessings upon them. May Allah Azzawajal forgive us without accountability for their sake. On the 21st of Ramadan al Kareem, it is the blessed day of the Day of Remembrance, the Urs of this beautiful and blessed individual. And uh, today, after Maghrib, will be the 20th. After Monday, after Maghrib, it will be the 21st the day of their remembrance, inshallah. So, in uh, linking with the, the Urs of, the, of this great uh, Khalifa of Islam, we're going to inshallah try to listen a bit of the biography, a bit regarding the seerah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi. Sorry, the seerah of uh, the companion of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Sayyidina Ali karamallahu taala wajhul kareem. Well, before we go into the main topic, just want to mention a beautiful narration of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in regards to. The blessings of Drude Pak, the blessings of recitation, recitation of Salat and Salam. The Holy Prophet says, Man salla alayya wahidatan 
sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. That the one who recites salat upon me once, then Allah showers ten mercies upon that person. And also another narration which is linked to the topic of today as well, regarding the blessings and the benefits of reciting through the park, it's one of the karamat, uh, a miracle, a marvel of Sayyidina Ali Kalamullah Ta'ala Wajjah Al-Kareem related to reciting of Salat and Salam. It's mentioned in uh, Rahatul Qulub that once a beggar, he approached some unbelievers and he asked that, can I have some wealth? And just at a close distance, Sayyidina Ali Kalamullah Ta'ala Wajjah Al-Kareem was uh, sat down. So out of uh, out of mockery and uh, in a joking way, they sent that beggar to Sayyidina Ali, Karmallahu Ta'ala Wajhul Kareem. So when that beggar came to Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, he asked the same question that, ya, ya Ali, I desire to have some wealth, please give me some wealth. So what Sayyidina Ali did was he recited the Rud and Salam upon the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recited Salat upon the Holy Prophet and blew in the hand of that beggar. And when he blew in the hand of that beggar, he instructed him that close your fist and go to the unbelievers that were there mocking and laughing at Sayyidina Ali. And when that beggar was approaching the disbelievers, they were also laughing that, you know, he just blew in his hand. What, what, what has he done? So when that beggar came and approached the unbelievers, and he opened his hand. In his hand, there were gold coins. Subhanallah. So this was a miracle of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem. One of the blessings that you can say uh, he gained from reciting Salat upon the Prophet Sallallahu as well. That he blew in the hand of a beggar and that empty hand came full of dinar, of gold coins. Subhanallah. So these are the blessings of reciting Salat and Salam upon the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and like this we should try our best especially in this month of Ramadan to increase our Salat and Salam you know in other days we might uh, be lacking in reciting uh, a, the amount of numbers that we should be reciting of Salat and Salam but in Ramadan try to uh, set you know some people might be in this kind of mindset that if there's only 15 days left, you know, what, what am I going to do now? Uh, you know, struggling with all these things and implementing these new things. Don't think like that. You know, there's still time for Ramadan. There's still time that we can attain the forgiveness of Allah, the blessings of this month. So our request for the viewers that they in, uh, make a kind of a schedule, a timetable. And in that timetable, adjust in the, the recitation of Salat and Salam. Even a, a good... Uh, way that you can uh, probably do this is after each salah have a set number of salat and salam that you're going to read so you sat on the musallah you're facing facing towards kaaba you know you're in a respectful manner you're in wudu uh, you know with your head lowered and just even if it's a few whatever it is however much you used to do before just increase a little bit more than that even if it's five more ten more fifty more whatever you can do just try to increase the recitation of Salat and Salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu And you will see the blessings of this in this month, inshaAllah, Azza wa Jal. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam. So a little bit regarding the biography and introduction to Sayyidina Ali Karmallahu ta'ala wa Jal Kareem. His name is Ali and he is the son of Abu Talib, who was the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. And from amongst his kunniyas was Abu Hassan, uh, i.e. the father of Hassan, and Abu Turab, which means uh, the father of uh, Soil. And there's a very beautiful reason why he was called Abu Turab, uh, the one who is of Soil. And inshallah, coming up, uh, we will cover the reason why this kunniya was given to him. Kunniya is basically something that the Arabs uh, would still do, and it was also in the time of the Holy Prophet. It's a sunnah, it's a blessed, blessed sunnah to keep a kunniya. And this is basically, uh, you can say, it was normally done uh, after the name of your child 
or it would be done um, with a, something which is a speciality of of yourself or it was done with over a, uh, a, um, a event that took place in your life so you, you'll be attributed to these things uh, so then this way it was recognized uh, exactly who that person was so for example Abu al-Hassan uh, one of the kunniyas of Sayyidina Ali reason why because his son was called Hassan his oldest son was Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and so that is why his kunniya was this as well and then the other reason of Abu Turab inshallah we're going to come up to that later on so like this there's many reasons for why the kunniya is normally given like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his kunniya was Abu Qasim the father of Qasim who was uh, radiallahu ta'ala who was his blessed son uh, and like this you might have heard of other uh, Abu Huraira okay Abu Huraira his real name is not Abu Huraira okay it's, it's something else same with Abu Bakr Siddiq Abu Bakr Siddiq's real name is actually Abdullah but his kunniya is very well known and renowned due to his kunniya so these were uh, some of the the traditions of the Arabs in that time as well and uh, he was a paternal uh, cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Ali was the paternal cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his noble mother, the mother of uh, Sayyidina Ali, her name was Fatima bint Asad radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and she accepted Islam and she also was a, a muhajira, she migrated and she passed away in Madinatul Munawwara. Um, as we all know, uh, Sayyidina Ali Karimullah uh, Ta'ala Wajhul Kareem also uh, was not just uh, in relation to uh, his uncle's side related to the Prophet Sallallahu but he was also the son-in-law of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He married the daughter of the Prophet Sayyidina Fatima, uh, Fatima Tuzahara Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha. And it's actually one of the signs, Imam Abu Hanifa, he mentions that there are three signs of the Ahl Sunnah. Uh, one of them is Hubbul Tafdeel uh, al the superiority of the Shaykhain, which was Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala The second is Hubbul Khatanain, the love of both of the son in laws of the Holy Prophet, وسلم, who were Sayyidina Usman al Ghani radiallahu ta'ala and Sayyidina Ali kamallahu ta'ala wa kareem. And the third was Mas al uh, Khufain, the wiping over the leather socks. These are the three alamat, the signs of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Uh, when did Sayyidina Ali uh, accept Islam? So there are different narrations. Some say at the age of 10, some at the age of 9. There are also narrations of the age of 8. Uh, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, Imam Ahl Sunnat, mentions that it was. Eight or ten years old, uh, when the uh, when uh, Sayyidina Ali Karimullah Taala Wajhul Karim accepted Islam. So the reason for his acceptance of Islam is very beautiful as well. Uh, I've got uh, Khulafat uh, Khulafai Rashidin, this book which is printed by Maktabat al Madina, written by uh, Fatih Millat uh, Jalaluddin Amjadi Rahmatullah Taala Ali, Khalifa of Al Hazrat Rah uh, Rahmatullah Ali. He mentions in here. Uh, the the um, the vatia the story for when Sayyidina Ali accepted Islam, and uh, the summary of which is that uh, once he came and he saw that Sayyidina Khadija al Kubra, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, and also the uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, himself, they were praying salah, and after they prayed salah, they, he asked, uh, you know, what was you doing? So the Prophet وسلم, uh, gave uh, Sayyidina Ali da'wah. He gave him da'wah to come to the oneness of Allah to only worship one God. He mentions that we, we were worshipping one God and this is something that you should also adopt and follow uh, the religion of Wahdaniya, the religion of uh, one God. So after uh, at that time he did not make that decision that I'm going to accept Islam but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then overnight opened his heart towards Islam and uh, the next day he came into the court of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and he said that Ya Rasulullah, uh, I'm just paraphrasing here, he said Ya Rasulullah that I am uh, accepting the religion of Islam, I am accepting the da'wah that you 
gave to me the uh, last uh, the day before so like this he accepted islam on the hands of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you know the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam throughout the life he was very close to sayyidina ali karamallahu ta'ala wa jahul kareem and sayyidina ali was very close to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in fact once um, at the time of uh, when uh, they were um, migrating uh the, the, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made uh, pairs so uh, from two sahaba he made pairs of each two of the sahaba ikram and said to them that he is your brother and uh, for you this person is your brother so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam basically made pairs of the sahaba and told them both that both of you are brothers to each to one another So at that time Sayyidina Ali came crying to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that ya Rasulullah you've made everyone have a, a brother you've made uh, the sahaba the, the ones that have migrated brothers of one another now there is no one that you have made me as a brother no no other sahabi so upon this the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he gave an amazing beautiful reply and this is uh, found in Uh, Sunan Tirmidhi. This this narration is in Sunan Tirmidhi from the Sihah Sita. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Anta akhi fi dunya wal akhirah." Subhanallah. That you are my uh, you are my, my my brother, my my uh, companion in the dunya, wa fil akhirah, and in the hereafter as well. Subhanallah. So the person who was uh, sahib dunya was sahib al akhirah. is none other than Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhahu Al-Kareem Amazing personality, his love and devotion for the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is truly amazing uh, from the seerah when you when we read upon the the, the biography of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how amazing and how much love he had for uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's actually mentioned I just have to uh, mention this beautiful riwayah that uh, in Sahih Bukhari, that on the occasion uh, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari that on the occasion of the Battle of Khaybar, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that tomorrow I will give the flag to the man who loves Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he also loves Allah and His Rasul. So the next day the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then gave sayyidina ali karamallahu ta'ala wajh al kareem the flag subhanallah so this was the beautiful uh, love relationship that uh, sayyidina ali had and also in another narration uh, in ash shifa sharif imam qadiyas has mentioned this narration that kana kana wallahi ahabba ilayna min amwalina wa auladina wa abnaina wa ummahatina ومن ومن الماء البرد على الظماء سبحان الله ضد سيدنا علي كما الله تعالى وجه الكريم هي said that um, by Allah the beloved Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is more beloved to me than our wealth than our children than our fathers our mothers and the cold water at the time of intense thirst سبحان الله so this was the love that سيدنا علي كما الله تعالى وجه الكريم had for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that even you know that time when we and truly in the time of ramadan this is when we normally uh, feel the thirst uh, so at the time of ramadan at the time of iftar uh, is when we feel the immense thirst and we we would desire especially when it's in the heat uh, those of the viewers that are from abroad um, especially in the indo pak area or in the area where is uh, peak summer time now Uh, the, the thirst that is at that time and the the desire for drinking cold water at that time is such intense um i myself i have experienced that as well i'm sure many of the viewers have experienced it as well the, the sayyid ali says that i love the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than that desire at the time when you want to have extreme thirst and you have uh, the desire to drink cold water so more than that I love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this was Sayyidina Ali karamallahu ta'ala wa jahlul kareem, amazing personality. And I just want to mention a beautiful uh, a story that happened in the time of Sayyidina Ali 
uh, it's mentioned that once uh, in order to prepare some food for the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ was uh, going through uh, some intense uh, intense um, times of hunger. So the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted to, uh, the Prophet Ali which is Kareem, he wanted to prepare some food for the Prophet ﷺ. So at that time, he went and he asked uh, for some dates, some ajwa kujur. So some dates were presented into the court of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Ta'ala Wajal Kareem and he gave all of these dates to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said that Ya Rasulullah I know that you're going through some like, some hunger and I got these dates prepared for you and he went through some difficulty in order to gain these dates. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he asked him that uh, ya Ali, did you do this uh, out of the love for Allah Almighty and His Rasul? And he replied that, yes, O Messenger of Allah. Uh, the beloved Rasul Sallallahu then replied and said, by Allah Almighty, whoever loves Allah and His Rasul, then destitution and hunger come to him just as quickly as a flood of water flows downwards. Therefore, the one who loves Allah and His Rasul should keep a shield of patience ready. Subhanallah. And many other vaqiat and stories are, are mentioned in the books of uh, Sirah in regards to the love that, the, that Sayyidina Ali Karamullah Ta'ala Wajal Kareem had for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another aspect of Sayyidina Ali's life was his immense a level of knowledge and in regards to the knowledge of Sayyidina Ali uh, you might have heard of the very famous narration about um, the Prophet Sallallahu saying that Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Ali Yubabuha and this narration is found in Musnad Imam Ahmad and uh, many scholars have commented on this narration saying that it's not a, a correct narration but Imam uh, Jalaluddin al-Suyuti al-Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi uh, who was an amazing uh, scholar of Islam someone who uh, was very deep in the knowledge of hadith so regarding this uh, riwayah of ana madinatul ilmi wa ali yubabuha which means that uh, the ali the i am the city of knowledge and ali is the door to that city so this narration is mentioned that imam jalaluddin al-Suyuti says that this hadith is Hassan and those that have called it mawzu meaning uh, meaning fabricated mawzu then they are in in the wrong so this was the, the saying of uh, the Prophet ﷺ regarding the knowledge of Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhul Kareem and even in men, it's mentioned in regards to uh, how much uh, knowledge the Prophet ﷺ had gifted Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajh al Kareem. It's just one of the um, of the narrations in Tariq ibn Asakir, uh, Sayyidina Imam ibn Asakir radiallahu ta'ala, a very famous uh, historian. He collected very famous uh, narrations and he has a very uh, zakhim book in regards to history of Islam. So in there he mentions that Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an, very famous companion uh, through which the Hanafi madhab, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, his madhab comes through uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. He says that I was present in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when somebody asked about Sayyidina Ali and he said that wisdom was divided into 10 parts. Nine parts were given to Sayyidina Ali and one part was given to other people. SubhanAllah. So out of 10 parts of knowledge that was granted to Sayyidina, uh, was granted to, uh, nine of that was granted to Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Ta'ala wa Jukareen, and one was left for the others. SubhanAllah. And many other narrations can be found in regards to the level of knowledge of Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Ta'ala Wajal Kareem 
even in regards to Sayyidina Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentions as well, I'm paraphrasing that, uh, she said that uh, uh, there is no one more knowledgeable in regards to the Masail, in regards to uh, jurisprudence, more than Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Mujahul Kareem. And this was Sayyidina Aisha Sadiqa, who was uh, known as a Muftiya, one of the very high level and high caliber uh, scholars, uh, scholaress of the Sharia of Islam, closeness of, due to the closeness of the Holy Prophet. I just want to touch upon some of the miracles that were are mentioned in regards to Sayyidina Ali as well. And these miracles are amazing. You know, the one that I mentioned right at the start uh, of regarding the, the Rudi Park when he blew upon the, the palm uh, of, of the beggar as well. But like this, there are many other narrations that have been mentioned in regards to the miracle. And miracle is something which goes against uh, norm, something that goes against the norm, something that goes against the intellect. This is something which is called a miracle, something which the intellect cannot understand and goes against logic. So once it's mentioned in Tafsir Kabir, uh, Imam Fakhruddin Razi, his very famous commentary of the Quran, he's, he narrates this narration in there, that once a uh, Abyssinian slave uh, who had great self-esteem for Sayyidina Ali Karamullah Ta'ala Wajh al -Kareem, uh, who had great esteem for, the, uh, for Sayyidina Ali Karimullah Ta'ala Wajal Karim, he committed a crime of theft. The people took him to the court of Amir Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and the slave confessed to what, what crime he committed. And then Sayyidina Ali, he, he implemented the law, which is uh, the, the cutting of the hand. And when the slave was on his way home, he came across Salman Farsi and who was also a very famous uh, companion of the Prophet and another, uh, another person who was by the name of Ibn al-Khawwa and they inquired regarding the hand, why was the hand cut off and he said that, you know, I, I, this was uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen radiallahu ta'ala Sayyidina Ali he had implemented a punishment on me. Ibn Khawba then amazingly said that he has cut your hand off and you are still taking his name with such honor. Because obviously someone that's, that's gave you punishment, you don't really have that kind of uh, honor for them anymore. Even if you did have before, it kind of diminishes. But still that slave had immense respect and honor for Amir al-Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Ali Karimullah Ta'ala wa Karim. And the slave replied that, why wouldn't I admire him? He cut off my hand lawfully and saved me from the torment of hellfire. SubhanAllah, look at the, the thinking. And this was a, uh, a slave. And the thinking of that slave was that, you know, although he's cut off my hand, although he's, uh, he's, uh, he's done something which uh, is, uh, you know, he's made me disabled basically. But still, he knew that he did, that Amir Mumineen did this out of justice. And this is what Islam teaches as well justice that no matter uh, who that person or that individual is who's committed that crime justice should always be given and this is the right of the victim as well the right of the victim is that justice is to be served to the one who perpetrated the, the crime so this is one of the fundamental aspects of islam and you'll see how the uh, the the life of the khulafa rashidin the khulafa the caliphs that were the rightly guided caliphs. They all, mashallah, were very just and very, um, they took the matters of adal, of, of justice, uh, very uh, intensely. They were very intense in this matter of justice. So when that slave, he's, he, he, the slave replied that, uh, you know, I admire uh, Sayyidina Ali. And he, although he cut off my hand, but he did it lawfully and he saved me from the, the torment of the hellfire. Because whatever punishment is given in the world in, in, uh, in, in replacement of the, the, the crime that the ones committed, then inshallah in the hereafter, that person won't be punished for that, uh, for that uh, crime that he committed. So Sayyidina Salman Farsi listened to what they had said and related this, that, related this to Sayyidina Ali who summoned that slave and placed the severe hand back onto the joint of the wrist, covering it with a handkerchief. So Sayyidina Ali heard of this, he called and summoned that, that slave 
and he put the hand back onto through the wrist and put a handkerchief over it. And then Sayyidina Ali started reciting something. Meanwhile, a voice was heard from the unseen saying, remove the cloth. And when the people removed the cloth, the served hand of the slave was found reattached with the wrist, leaving no scar behind. SubhanAllah, what an amazing, you can say, madani surgery this was. That the, the amazing miracle of Sayyidina Ali, that he attached a hand that was cut off and he attached it, put a handkerchief over it. A voice was heard saying from the unseen that remove the handkerchief. And when it was removed, there was the hand attached back to the wrist and there was no scar at all as well. SubhanAllah. Amazing. And like this, many other karamat of Sayyidina Ali are mentioned in Shawahid al Nabuwa. It's mentioned that once there was such a heavy flood and the river Euphrates, uh, this was. Uh, it was, you know, uh, it was going to um, flood the agriculture, the fields. And the people turned to the court of Sayyidina Ali. And Sayyidina Ali stood up at once and got dressed in the Prophet's robe. He wore the robe of the Prophet ﷺ, the Jubbatul Mubaraka, and the sacred turban, the Imam Sharif, and the holy shawl, subhanAllah. And then he, radiallahu ta'ala, an, mounted his horse. He got onto his horse. Hassanain Karime, Imam Hassan, Imam, uh, Imam Hussein, and other, other companions accompanied him. And on the bank of uh, the river Euphrates, he offered two rakat Salatul Nafal and headed towards the bridge. After reaching the bridge, Sayyidina Ali pointed his staff towards the river and lowered the water level by a yard. He, he again pointed the staff towards the river, which further lowered by a yard. And the third time he pointed the water, uh, pointed the staff at the water and lowered it more than three yards and the flood then subsided. The people requested the Awam Mir Mumineen, this is enough, please stop. SubhanAllah. So you can see that uh, that the miracle of Sayyidina Ali, he pointed his staff towards the river of Euphrates, which was overflowing, it was going to uh, damage the agriculture. But Alhamdulillah the blessings of the two rakat, the blessings of the Jubai Mubarakah that he had on, the blessings of this person, individual himself. It was through through the blessings of all of these things that Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the wasila of, of Sayyidina Ali, with the staff, made the water subside and the flood to subside, subhanAllah. So amazing personality he was. Uh, you know, there's stories of um, uh, people who were paralyzed, people who could not walk, people who who were bedridden uh, by the wasila of Ali Karimullah Ta'ala Wajhul Kareem. They uh, became healthy. They became, uh, you know, um, they, 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 were, they were cured. So now this many other things are in the seerah of the Sahaba. And I just want to now go on to, the, uh, on to in regards to, uh, some of the fazail that the companions have mentioned. Sayyidina Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says that the Holy Prophet sallallahu says that man ahabba aliyan faqad ahabbani wa man ahabbani faqad ahabbullah wa man abghad aliyan faqad abghadani wa man abghadani faqad abghadullah that the one who loves Ali, this is the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the one who loves Ali so indeed he has loved me and the one who loves me so indeed he loves Allah and the one who has enmity for Ali then indeed he has enmity for Allah for me and the one who has enmity for me he indeed has enmity for Allah subhanallah and in another narration in uh, in al musnad imam ahmad it's mentioned that uh, the prophet sallallahu he said in regards to Sayyidina Ali in his absence, that man kuntu, man kuntu maulahu, fa'aliyu maulah, Allahumma wali man walahu, wa'adi man adahu. That whoever is, uh, the, whoever, whoever I am the maula for, then Ali is his maula. And oh Allah, oh Allah Azza wa Jal, whoever loves Ali, radiallahu ta'ala an, then make him have love, uh, then make him make me have make me have love for him as well. And the one who has any enmity for Ali, then make me have enmity for him as well. 
So this was the narration of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, which I just paraphrased. Another narration uh, in regards to Sayyidina Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha again, she says that the Prophet ﷺ said, Man sabba aliyan faqad sabbani, the one who swore at Ali, then indeed he have he has sworn at me as well. So these are the narrations in regards to the blessings of Sayyidina Ali, Karamallahu ta'ala wa kareem, the excellence of Sayyidina Ali. In regards to the kunniya, I was going to mention the kunniya of uh, the Sayyidina Ali, Abu Turab. So at the start of the bayan, I said that this was the kunniya of Sayyidina Ali, one of his kunniyas, Abu Turab, which means the father of soil. So the reason why this was, and this was the kunniya that he preferred, he liked the most as well. Why? Because this was given by the Prophet Sallallahu And the story goes that once he was in the masjid and he he was laying down and when uh, the Prophet ﷺ entered into the masjid he saw that Sayyidina Ali was laying down on the floor and mud was all over his body so he said to Sayyidina Ali that Kum ya Abu Tarab, that stand up O the one of O father of dust subhanallah so from this the, the kunni of Abu Turab then uh, was uh, was given to Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Ali loved this kunniya more than anything else and he would always want people to uh, remember him and to call out to him by uh, uh, Abu Turab as well, subhanAllah. The time of his blessed shahada, so the, uh, the time of uh, uh, Ramadan al Karim, a few days before the 21st, some narrations say the 19th, some say before that, uh, unfortunately, Sayyidina Ali Karmallah Ta'ala wa he, he was attacked uh, in a very vicious way, uh, you know, so much so that uh, there were a very severe wound to his head. And even in that time, even though he was very severely wounded, he, mashallah, stayed alive for a few days. And on the 21st of Ramadan al Mubarak, uh, the, the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Khalifa, the fourth Khalifa of Islam, the Khalifa of the Muslimin, uh, he ended up passing away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And uh, regarding his passing away, there are narrations about uh, his uh, wasiyat that he uh, gave to Sidna, uh, his son Sidna Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and many of the things that we can mention, but I'll actually just conclude that because of the time limit as well I'd like to just conclude on one point uh, that we can all take back as well and this was uh, something that we should all try our best to act upon something that we can uh, implement in our lives as well in me uh, in my hands I've got Hilyatul Awliya which is also uh, printed by Maktabatul Madinia Madina in Urdu language by the name of Allah Walam Kibati so in here there's a narration regarding those who love Ali. What, are, what is the sign of loving Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem? Sayyidina uh, Mujahid Rahmatullah Ali, he says that Hazrat Sayyidina Ali Radiallahu Ta'ala an said that the one who loves me, uh, he will be the one who has uh, patience and tolerance. He will be the one of knowledge and he will be the one of dry lips, meaning someone who goes through immense thirst, goes through fasting. And he will be such a pious individual that his uh, ibadah uh, will be, uh, because of his ibadah, he will go into uh, seclusion. And this was uh, the, the, the alama, the, the signs of those who love Sayyidina Ali Karamallahu Ta'ala wa Jal Kareem. So we should also try our best to implement the love of Sayyidina Ali in our hearts. The loving of Sayyidina Ali, the loving of the Ahl Bayt, the loving of the Sahaba Ikram, Har Sahabi Nabi, Jannati Jannati. Every single Sahabi is Jannati. So loving the Sahaba Ikram, loving the Ahl Bayt should be an immense uh, part of our life, something that we are very closely attached towards. And we should try our best to read more upon the seerah of our beloved Sahaba Ikram. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Any of the Sahaba Ikram, they're all stars. So whichever one of you, you uh, whichever one of you wants to find guidance, 
then follow them. So I'll just paraphrase the hadith there. So we should try our best to follow in the footsteps of the, of the Sahaba. And one of the most fundamental and core aspects of the life of the Sahaba Ikram is that they had the immense love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, uh, the, the love of Sayyidina Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala an. Amazing how when he would, uh, uh, he would uh, do things which were, uh, which people will think that, you know, it's a bit silly. So, for example, uh, like uh, once there was a, uh, a, a, a tree and he went under the tree whilst lowering his head. But the branches were really high. So the people asked, him, you know, what, what, why did you do this for? And he replied that once I was with the Prophet Wasallam, and the branches of the tree were low at that time. And the Prophet Wasallam went under the branches by lowering his, his back, his blessed back. So just to act upon that sunnah, going under this tree, I remember that sunnah and I wanted to act upon it, so I did the same as well. So this was the love of the Sahaba Ikram that they had for the Prophet Wasallam. So we should also try our best to follow in their footsteps, have the love of the Prophet Wasallam. It's the month of Ramadan, uh, try our best to uh, implement the seerahs or, or the aspects or the habits, you can say, of the Sahaba Ikram in our, in our lifetime as well. The Ramadan is the best opportunity to uh, refresh oneself. You know, the month of Ramadan comes once a year to renew our faith, to refresh ourselves, to give us back uh, the remembrance, get us back towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you know, each year Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted his, his slaves the month of Ramadan so that they can get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each week they, Allah has gifted the, the day of Jumu'ah for the believers that they can get back to his, his remembrance. Every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day has kept the salah as a way to get back to the remembrance of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always calling upon his slaves. But we are so heedless that we, uh, um, we do not adhere to his commandments. We do not um, uh, follow his, uh, the sunnahs of the Holy Prophet sallallahu So we need to inshallah so implement all the things in our life. May Allah so have mercy upon us. May Allah so give us the ability to complete this month of Ramadan. And complete it with this right due. Ameen. Bijahi Nabil Ameen. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Dawat Islami uh, is uh, working in many countries of the world, in many departments. And it's my request to stay attached towards the environment of Dawat Islami. And also in this month of Ramadan, many people give their zakat, sadaqat, their fitrana, the month of Ramadan the, for the day of Eid. Many people give fitrana and it's encouraged that you do uh, give fitrana before the day of Eid. So definitely, first of all, those who are uh, in your relatives that are needy, give to them. And do also give a share from your fitrah, from your zakat, sadiqat to dawah the islami as well. May Allah give us the ability to act upon what has been said. Ameen. Bijahin Nabil Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam.